Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. First of all, thank you so much for watching part one of my driving impression of the 2022 Toyota Tundra in which I talked about the steering feel and the handling of the Tundra compared to its main competitors. If you haven't yet watched part one, please go and watch that video first before watching this video, which is part two of the driving impression. So in this video, we're going to cover two more sections in which I'm going to talk about the ride and the suspension of the new Tundra compared to its competitors, and also very importantly, talk about the engine and how that feels in relation to all of its competitors. So stay with me until the very end as I talk about the ride and the engine performance of the Tundra as an automotive engineer. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, thank you so much for always watching my channel, supporting my videos, and giving me feedback. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing as I talk about very interesting thing as an automotive engineer and give you a different perspective than other media outlets. So let's go through each of these sections one by one until I cover all the seven categories of the driving impression of the Tundra. So to summarize, in part one of the driving impression series, I cover the steering feel and the handling. And in this part two, I'm going to talk about the ride and suspension and the engine performance. So that covers four categories out of the seven. So in part three, which is coming up a little bit later on, we will also talk about the transmission feel, the braking, and the noise, vibration, and harshness of the Tundra. So let's get right to it and talk about the ride and the suspension of the new Tundra. Now, whether you are a type of person who loves to drive or who likes to be driven as a passenger, ride and suspension setup is perhaps one of the most important elements of a truck. And these days, the truck manufacturers have continuously improved the ride feel to the point where it kind of rivals SUVs these days. So for the Tundra, for example, they replaced the old leaf spring uh, set up in the rear with the coil springs, which makes a huge difference in terms of ride quality. And the Tundra has also multi-link in the front. So overall, the suspension setup has been completely overhauled and is now a world-class suspension. So where does the Tundra's ride and suspension setup compared to other competitors. Now there's only one competitor that has coil springs in the back in terms of a standard setup, and that's the Ram 1500. A Ram 1500 therefore gets my nod as the truck with the most comfortable ride, because not only does it have coil springs in the back, it has available air suspension in all four corners. Whereas for the Tundra, it does also have a coil springs in the back, but the air suspension is only available in the rear, which is really primarily used to uh, adjust the height up and down. So in terms of my overall impression, driving all these trucks under many different circumstances, I would say in the spectrum of the ride and the feel, the Ram 1500 has the most controlled and the best ride by far. Mostly again because of the coil springs in the back and air suspension all around at the flagship level. Second to the Ram is the Tundra because Tundra also has coil springs in the back and a multi-link in the front. And when I was driving the Tundra over a variety of road conditions, I found the ride to be stable, very, very controlled, and uh, actually very comfortable. It's a bit on the firm side, of course it is because it's a truck, but it felt very balanced and it was extremely, extremely smooth and refined. So very closely, right after the Ram 1500, is the Tundra in terms of ride quality and the ride performance and the suspension mechanism. Now, if you look at the rest of the competitors, which include the Ford F-150, the Nissan Titan, and the GMC Chevy Duo truck, they all have a leaf spring in the back. So no matter how well they engineer the suspension, it's still going to be more bumpy and not as controlled and not as well balanced as either the Ram 1500 or the Tundra. So going back to the spectrum of the rating, the first is Ram, Closely behind the RAM is the Tundra in terms of ride quality. And I would say third in ranking is the tie between Ford and GMC slash Chevy. Uh, Ford F-150 and the GMC slash Silverado Duo have about the same ride quality. They both have a leaf spring in the back, 
but well controlled and still very comfortable, just not as good as either the Tundra or the Ram 1500. And then I would say, again, in, in the spectrum of the rating, the last one on the list will be Nissan Titan. The Nissan Titan, as I mentioned in my previous video, has a really good solid steering feel, but the ride is also the stiffest among all of the trucks. But overall, all the trucks perform really well because they're big, the wheelbase are long, and suspension is quite forgiving, so most of them are quite comfortable. Also keep in mind that Tundra has adaptive electronic control suspension, which is also offered in a GMC slash Chevy Duo, but no one else offered that right now. So Tundra has that advantage, which makes it very, very comfortable over a variety of different road conditions. And of course, once I get to drive the Tundra more and more, I can reassess this uh, Spectrum and perhaps it will beat the Ram when I drive them side by side. So I look forward to that time. Which brings to the next section, which is a very important topic, and that is the engine. This is a super, super debated topic because Tundra moved away from having a V8 engine while the competitors kept the V8 engine as an option. Uh, and then uh, they moved to a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 for the first time with a hybrid offered as an option on the higher trim models. So Tundra's powertrain has dramatically changed and therefore people are either upset or happy about the change. So this is a really interesting comparison because Tundra only offers twin turbo V6 with or without hybrid, while competitors continue to offer a variety of different engines, including diesels and V8. So it's a bit like comparing apples and oranges, but I will say this much, as you will see in the footage I'm going to show you shortly, if you're a type of person who loves the feel of a V8 engine, which has a very natural and organic feel, well, you're not gonna get that in a twin turbo V6 in a Tundra. Now the Tundra's new powertrain, with or without hybrid, has immense amount of power and torque, perhaps one of the best in the industry, but it still does not feel like a V8 engine. So that's something you need to know. Now Toyota has many reasons why they moved to a twin turbo V6 and a hybrid setup, primarily to increase the fuel economy and fuel efficiency and optimize all things to do with powertrain, but uh, they cannot possibly replicate the exact feel of a V8. But because of the twin turbo design, Tundra's engine does have a really good torque at a very lower RPM. So in some way, it does kind of push you to the seat better than a V8 engine in the lower RPM. So there is nothing inherently wrong with the torque curve or the feel of the twin turbo V6. It's just that it doesn't feel the same as a V8. Now the chief engineer of Toyota Tundra did say that they tried to mimic the feel of a diesel engine by having higher torque in a very lower RPM and it give you immense uh, power and torque right off the bat. So they've done a really good job of that, but it is not the same as a V8. So that's something you will have to personally figure out whether you like it or not by driving the competitor's trucks with a V8 engine and compare that to a Tundra with a twin turbo V6 with or without hybrid, and you decide which one is better. If you're asking me as an automotive engineer, which one I prefer in terms of the overall feel, of course the V8 engine feels better, even though it's a different kind of feel from a twin turbo V6 or a hybrid system. Now just keep in mind that none of the V8 engine provide a good fuel efficiency, so if you want good power and torque, and good fuel efficiency, you will have to pick a twin turbo design or something with a hybrid as opposed to V8 engine. So for now, I'm just pointing out the difference in the feel of the V8 engine versus twin turbo V6, and clearly there is a difference. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Now, if you're the type of person who like to look at the torque and horsepower numbers and compare that to competitors, well, things are a little bit different because the Tundra looks darn impressive when you do that. Let me grab my cheat sheet so I can tell the exact power and torque of the Tundra compared to the competitors. And again, it's really quite impressive. So the base twin turbo V6 in the Tundra has 389 horsepower and 479 foot-pounds of torque. Now, Ford is the only other competitor that offers twin turbo V6, and he has 400 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque. So F-150 has more power and torque than the Tundra, although the torque curve is a little bit different. Now the rest of competitors have a V8 engine as a baseline and some of them have more power, some of them have less power and torque than the Tundra. But the most interesting comparison is the Tundra hybrid to Ford F-150 hybrid. The Tundra has 437 horsepower and 583 foot-pounds of torque. Compare that to the Ford F-150 which has 430 horsepower, so seven less and 570 foot-pounds of torque, which is 13 foot-pounds of torque less 
than a tundra with a hybrid. So when it comes to the hybrid powertrain, Tundra has the most amount of torque and power, and it has more power and torque than most of the V8 engine. So if you compare the hybrid of the Tundra with the rest of the competition, well, it actually has one of the highest amount of horsepower and torque. And when you take out the Tundra hybrid on the road, wow, it has immense power and torque, it pushes you to the seat, and the thing takes off like a rocket in a way that Tundra never did before. Now, I do also want to point out one important thing, and that is the competitors also offer diesel engines. Diesel engines typically have less horsepower, but tremendous amount of torque very early in the lower RPM. So they feel very different, very torquey, and it pulls really, really strong. So unfortunately, the Tundra doesn't offer diesel engine also, despite the fact that its TNGA counterpart, such as Land Cruiser, do offer diesel engine in Asia. So that's unfortunate. But if you're the type of person who loves the diesel engine because it's got immense amount of torque and you need to pull something heavy uphill, well, diesel engines definitely do have advantage and they have a particular feel that is hard to replicate. So coming back to my comparison in terms of spectrum of engines, well, this becomes a lot more difficult because we're now mixing V8 engines, diesels, twin turbo V6, and the hybrid system all in the same spectrum. But in terms of general impression of the engine, putting aside the fuel efficiency in this spectrum of the comparison of the different trucks, I will have to say the GMC and the Chevy's 6.2 liter V8 is the best feeling engine. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's refined, torquey, and it has that really beautiful organic feel that is impossible to replicate with twin turbo V6. So I would rank that as the very best V8 engine, closely followed by Ram 1500 V8 engine, which also has this glorious V8 feel and it's just super smooth on the road. And I would say the Ford F-150 and the Nissan Titans V8 engine are quite similar in terms of overall feel and they're kind of clustered around the same area of the spectrum. Now, if you bring the twin turbo V6 and the twin turbo V6 with hybrid into the count, well, it's kind of a metal pack in terms of the feel because it doesn't feel as organic as a V8 engine, but in terms of its performance, and that is how quickly it can provide power and torque at the lower RPM, well, it ranks right up there with the best V8 engine. So not about the feel, but just about the performance. So my comments about the engine might be a little bit confusing because we're comparing all different kinds of mixture of engines, but let me try to summarize. In terms of the feeling of the engine, all the V8 engine feel better and more organic and more natural, and to my taste, a better feel than Tundra's twin turbo V6 slash twin turbo V6 with hybrid. But in terms of the ability to give you the most amount of power and torque, the Tundra's hybrid 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 wins the prize because he has so much power and so much torque at a low RPM and give you that amazing acceleration feel that's also hard to replicate if you do not have a twin turbo system inside the engine bay. So now let me take you to the actual driving footage where I talk about the Tundra's engine on the road and then you can decide for yourself if you want a newer, more efficient twin turbo V6 with or without hybrid, uh, or you want to stick with a tried and true V8 engine and suffer the fuel efficiency as a compromise. So I just did a full acceleration here and uh, the transmission, which is the 10 speed iSheen transmission, performs uh, flawlessly. It's quiet, it can, you can barely hear the shifting. Uh, from first to second to third and fourth gear. Uh, it cruises along surprisingly well. If they can produce a prototype at this level of quality, well, I can only imagine the production model will be so much better. Um, the, but the most important thing I want to point out is that for those of you who are going to be missing out on V8 engine or you think you're going to miss out on a V8 engine, you're not going to miss it once you drive this truck. It's got tremendous potential uh, when you step on the gas and it just uh, kind of flies you into the back of your seat. Um, at least in the hybrid version, there's no shortage of power or torque. Having said that, I will also say that uh, the feel of the V8 engine is not there. The naturally aspirated V8 engine has this uh, very smooth, 
and a slow ramp up to higher RPM that produces more torque and power. So that feeling is very different than the turbocharged engine here, especially in the hybrid version. You don't get the natural beauty of a V8 engine feel, so that feeling is not there. But just in terms of pure performance and pure power and torque, there's absolutely no issue whatsoever. And uh, that summarizes my section 3 and 4 of the driving impression for part 2 of the videos. And then coming up after this video is covering transmission, braking, and NVH or noise, vibration, and harshness. Please stay tuned for part 3 of the driving impression. Thank you so much. I'm signing off for now.